Welcome to our Firebird Database Administrator Training covering the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School held by Holger Klent and Jason Chapman as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. We'll continue in this tutorial session by taking a brief look at alternative database repair methods. Database corruption can occur at any time in any part of the database. The sudden panic that often accompanies such a serious problem can be mitigated by planning for the worst case scenario before it actually happens. Who to call, what to do, etc. Having a plan and executing it is important. It makes sense to always have a warm backup copy of the database as a read-only. Most companies can function with a read-only database for at least a few hours without critically failing the business, giving you time to put your contingency plan into action. Always rely on two databases, the live and the replicated, with the knowledge that you can switch in an emergency with minimal loss of data. More information about replication can be referred to in our online documentation article, Bidirectional Replication for Interbase and Firebird. After taking emergency measures to ensure work can continue, you will then need to begin to analyse your problem, locate it and, as far as possible, repair it. If database validation using GFIX, as described in our last tutorial, doesn't bring you any further, limit the damage to as few datasets as possible and use IB Experts Extract Metadata to extract all healthy data. The Firebird Core package has no dump tool, so it's important to analyse your metadata scripts to trace what started to go wrong, where and when. If your backups are failing regularly on the same table or tables due to irreparable data damage and you've not been able to solve the problem using GFIX, this is an alternative way to save at least all remaining healthy data and the database itself. First attempt to restrict the problem to as few datasets as possible using the SELECT command on the table ID field. For example, select COUNT from product where ID between 10,000 and 15,000. Now you know the problem is in the upper area, so then try 15,000 and 17,000, and that's where the error seems to be. So when I try 16,000, it's OK. So I know the lower limit is 16,000 and the upper limit 17,000. Slowly try to limit the range of damaged datasets to a smaller number as possible. Here, for example, I start at 16,200 and work my way through in steps of 100. I get an error message at 16,900, so the error is somewhere between dataset ID numbers 16,800 and 16,900. When you've narrowed down your damaged datasets to a smaller range as possible, you can then use the IB Expert Tools menu item, Extract Metadata. Connect to your database and select all tables for metadata and data. The good thing about IB Experts scripting tool is that you can create a new database and you can even include blobs, which always historically used to be a problem. Extract 2 offers choices in a drop-down list. We recommend selecting here the option Separate Files. You can extract all or just certain database objects. You can even select which fields you wish to extract data from. As we want a copy of the database, we will extract all objects and data from all tables. And for the product table, we'll add a WHERE condition. WHERE ID not between 16,800 and 16,900. Then generate your script using the green arrow icon or F9. The dataset 6700 has been found and the error message is displayed. Now we'll take 16800 and 17100 as our definition, which limits the problem to 300 datasets. So, when I now go back to the data table in Extract Metadata, I can adjust the WHERE condition to WHERE ID not between 16800 and 17100 and generate a script. You can see that 9,699 data records have been successfully extracted from the product table. And if, for example, I know that because of this WHERE condition which data sets are missing, I could theoretically explicitly export these missing sets from an older backup version of the database. 
Let's take a look at the scripts generated and saved in the FBCon session directory. Here you can see that a batch file has been created, runme.bat. If I open all the files, you can see this batch file starts the IBE script program, the runme.all.sql with certain parameters, which reads all the files from IBE$start, then all the data files, and finally IBE$finish. In IBE dollar start, you'll find the operations, create database, create metadata, and so on. This creates a new database with all objects and data, even including blob data. Tables are generated without any primary keys, foreign keys, constraints, or triggers, etc. This is followed by a series of insert commands, for example here in the customer table, using the IBE block function, reinsert. After all the data has been inserted, IBE dollar finish then inserts all primary keys, foreign keys, etc. The main advantage here is, in comparison to a backup and restore, I can, for example, go to the product table and search for the space where the missing data should be. Here we can see that the data sets are missing. Theoretically, I could now insert these missing data sets from an older metadata extract and then generate a new, fully functional database from these scripts. We've used this method successfully to repair a number of databases. And it's certainly a good alternative to GBAC, which only has two options. It either works or it doesn't. And to repair a database using the hex editor is extremely time-consuming and offers too many sources for errors. So if I have a database file that is behaving somewhat strangely, using this method I can save all data that I can touch and create a complete new copy of the database. And if some data is still missing, I can copy it from another source. You can, of course, carry all this out at script level using IBEC Extract Metadata. I can define the parameters down here to say, generate a script of this database, where conditions can be added if wished, and then the metadata extract can be generated from this script file. You might want to consider not just performing a backup each night, but also a metadata extract. This way, you are always prepared for the worst case scenario. So even if your backup suddenly doesn't work for whatever reason, you have your plan B in place, as you can generate a new database file from this extract. If you execute this block at script level using IBE script, users, other programs and tools can still continue to work with the database, in the same way as with GBAC. The programs take everything that was committed at the point in time when the execution is started. That is, all non-committed transactions are not taken into consideration. This method to extract metadata and data can also be used if you wish to make an alteration to an existing database. For example, update from SQL dialect 1 to 3, or specify a character set if no default character set was specified at the time of database creation. For example, to alter the default character set from none to ISO 88591, simply open IBE dollar start, Search character set none and replace with character set ISO 88591 and then run the run me all SQL script as mentioned before. As we've already mentioned, IB Expert also supports within this script certain blob information that can also be extracted using the check option extract blobs. IB Expert does nothing other in these scripts than to insert references as hex, the areas where the blobs are saved. If I open the demo DB and use the IB Expert ODBC viewer and view the animals table, here we can see a fish image. And if I want to extract this blob data, then I simply say here on the options page, extract blobs and then extract everything. Here I have my AAX SQL, the data part, which contains the fields. You can see the simple text fields, angelfish, etc. And this hex part here represents the blob contents. This is how blobs are referenced. The area from position 0 indicates the contents up to hexadecimal FA76. The second blob can be found from FA76 and has a length of 0, which means it is empty. 
and so on and so on. This file, aax.lob, holds all blob contents. It starts up here with bm, bitmap, followed by the definition of the fish bitmap image. And at the end of the bitmap file, the second blob contents start. You can see it is one massive file containing all the blob contents. So you can see that this way you can also work with blob content. For example, remove single blobs like this one here. So that was our introduction to alternative database repair methods. A transcript of this tutorial can be downloaded by all IB Expert registered full version holders from the customer download area at www.ibexpert.com. All topics presented here are also documented in detail on our website. We hope this tutorial has been of help to you and look forward to publishing our next topic in our series for DB admins. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IB Expert. Music